What's up you guys? My name is Josh Doyle and welcome back. This is another Money Mondays. In case you don't know, every single Monday I am starting to analyze deals in my local market, in your market, wherever. Um, if you guys are interested, send me a deal that you guys currently have, whether it's on the MLS or it's a, it's a private deal, you can send it to the email down below and what I will do is I will uh, create a, or sorry, I will analyze that deal for you in the next Money Monday. So without further ado, guys, I'm gonna hop onto the computer and I will show you guys the deal that I just found on the weekend with my buddy. Um, it's a student rental here in Hamilton. So let's check it out. Okay, guys, here we are. We are now back on the computer and this is a deal that's currently listed. So I'm gonna analyze this deal. We're gonna find out if it's a good deal, bad deal. Let's see. So like I said, it's a student rental house. It's it's currently on realtor.ca, listed for $480,000. Now I checked this address, guys, and this is what I would typically do. I would look up the address, and if for a student rental specifically, I would I would go to Google Maps, and I want to see the proximity to the college. We're talking about Mohawk, Mohawk College here. So let's see, from Mohawk College to this actual house, it's gonna be a two minute drive, and we wanna see walking, because students walk and bike. Look at this, we have a three minute walk, guys. This is incredible. Here's the college campus right here, and it's just a hop across the road, and boom, you're at this house. So what this means to me, guys, is that you will all, as long as that school is open, you will always have a tenant. You should never ever have to worry about getting a tenant. And as long as your property is, you know, in livable condition and people can live there. The good thing about student rentals is that students will live in rentals that are a little bit less desired in terms of um, aesthetic, like, you know, how the property looks. Um, as long as it's structurally sound and the utilities, you know, all the mechanicals are working and everything was good, students will live there. Um, not saying that I agree with being a slumlord and, you know, offering subpar living conditions, but you will always have a tenant is what I'm trying to say. Um, so that's amazing. Proximity, which is location, location, location is amazing. Um, let's look into some more details here, guys. We have seven bedrooms, four plus three. So from my understanding, that means that there's four bedrooms above grade, which is above ground, and we have three bedrooms below grade in the basement. And two bathrooms, so seven people, two bathrooms. Um, it's sufficient with that bathroom to, uh, to occupant or uh, student ratio. I would like to have another washroom in there, but I wouldn't have any I wouldn't have any more than seven students for two bedrooms. Okay, incredible opportunity. Five minute walk to the front door of the Mohawk College. Seven bedroom, three parking spaces. It's always good to have some parking space with the students. Even though you're so close, some students have cars. I wouldn't say it's required to have seven parking spaces, like one per student in this scenario. But as long as you have a couple, that's just extra bonus, guys. It says a detached garage on an oversized lot. Now on a student rental, oversized, that typically means there's gonna be more maintenance involved. So that's something we need to keep, keep in mind. Um, deep lot, once again, there's probably gonna be a lot of grass to cut. Well kept, it's a bungalow, many recent improvements. Okay, this is all good. Updated two bathrooms. Laundry on site, that's also good so the students don't have to go anywhere. Now we have a current monthly monthly rental income of $3,300. So what that means guys is if I take $3,300 and divide that by how many students are occupying the house, that gives me $471 on average per bedroom. Now I know that that is below market average depending on the condition of the property. I know that we can get a minimum of $500 per room depending on what type of product we offer the students. So if that's the case, if we can get 500 times seven, we can jack the rent up $3,500 a month, which is $200 a month times 12. That's an extra $2,400 a year, guys. So let's just remember that moving forward when we actually do our analysis. 
It includes the fridge, stove, washer, all that stuff, but it's in as is condition, which is common. They always, you know, they say as is a lot of the times. Guys, this is a huge lot, 50 by 195. You know, I've seen some investors, what they do is they purchase lots like this with anticipating in the future when they have extra reserve funds, they actually build additions on these properties and then they create additional units which jacks up their monthly rental income. So that could be a, a long-term play here looking at this land size. You'd have to obviously go to the property and take a look. But these are the type of things that I think about when I look at the details on the computer and then I verify them when I go to the property. I'm trying to be creative and look at every single possible way I can make money now and in the future. Okay, annual property taxes. This is good that they actually provided this for us guys because sometimes it's a pain uh, when they don't and we have to chase it down. Look, there's a full finished basement, which I would assume because there's uh, three bedrooms down there, once again, assuming. Okay, so everything looks pretty good. Look, they even give us room sizes, guys. This is good. All the bedrooms look like they're in good, um, the, within good sizes. This one here, this really stands out to me. 24 feet by 16 feet. Now, when I actually go to the property, I would take a look at this to see if I can cut that bedroom in half and maybe make eight bedrooms. So four up, four down. That would give you another $500 a month cash flow, which would equal five times 12. Is that another $6,000? 500 times 12, another $6,000 a year by adding another bedroom. So that right there is huge. Um, I would be super excited about getting over to the property and looking at that as soon as possible. All these other bedrooms are within, uh, you know, st within code. This one's a little small, eight feet, eight feet, but it, it still is within code. Um, yeah, everything is good here, guys. Okay, let's look at the photos. Okay, so we have standard all brick bungalow construction. This is good. It looks like it could be, well, we don't know what the foundation here is. I'll have to look in the notes below. Okay, large size living room, that's good. Students like a large common area, especially if you have seven of them in a house. That's perfect. Um, okay, nice washroom, this has been updated. It's got a nice vanity, it looks like the toilet's been updated. Uh, I don't know about the shower, but everything looks good, especially for a student rental. Kitchen here, not bad, you know, uh, it's definitely old cabinetry. You got some, you know, white appliances, which is not a big deal. Um, if they're newer, that'd be great, but they probably aren't because uh, everybody's upgrading to stainless steel these days. Looks like we got some wallpaper and some old tile. So, you know, old faucet here and sink. You know, I would check it out. It doesn't look like it's too bad. For a student rental, this is acceptable. Um, not even acceptable. This is good. This is fine. If you want to command top dollar rents, you'd want to really update this though. Uh, but easily still $500 a room. As long as it's clean and presentable, beautiful room here, lots of natural light. Once again, another perfect bedroom. See all that, what I see back here is maintenance. You need somebody to take care of all this grass and your property manager is not gonna cut the grass. So you either need to cut it yourself or even hire a student, one of the students at the house, you can re give them reduced monthly rent uh, for them to cut the grass once a month or twice a month or whatever unless you're gonna do it yourself, right? There's a shed here, you could give them, you know, provide them with a lawnmower, one-time fee, boom, you're done. And a lot of students will take the reduced monthly rent for you, for you to do that. So here's a bedroom, this looks like a pretty big bedroom, um, and it's obviously in the basement. Okay, we got washer, dryer stacked up here. We got another washroom that looks pretty updated with this tile, vanity, and toilet from whatever I can see. Um, and then we just have like a laundry tub sink, a little bit of a wall repair there, you know, nothing large. Uh, okay. So that's all we have in terms of the photos. I would say everything looks good here. I'm confident that looking at the photos, I can get $500 a month rent, maybe even more because of how close it is to the school. Um, and I know with a few minor upgrades, we could jack this rent up higher, probably 550 a month, maybe, maybe even higher, but 
let's just keep it, let's be conservative and think five, 500 to 550. Okay, so now we're gonna hop over to the whiteboard, guys, and I'm gonna actually break down the details for you. Okay, guys, we're back to the whiteboard now. Um, I have everything already written down here, so things can go a little quicker and it can make this video a little shorter. Uh, what I will do is I'm gonna run through this stuff really quick. Here we go. So there's seven bedrooms at an average of $525 per bedroom, okay? I know this is gonna fluctuate. I honestly think that we can get more per bedroom based on the proximity to the school, but um, I'm gonna factor in a little bit of money there to pay one of the students to cut the grass. Okay, so that's gonna give us a total monthly income. Our total income is $3,675, okay? Now, since we have our total income, guys, we're gonna hop over to the expense category in the center here. PM, this is property management. It's typically 10 per, seven to 10% of the total monthly rental income is what I'm experiencing. Also what I charge for my property management services. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it on the high side at around 10% and we'll say $367 a month for property management. Now this is hands off guys. I manage my own properties. Um, so this would actually be cash flow for me, which would jack up how much rental income I'm actually, sorry, not how much rental income I'm getting, but it would decrease my expenses, which would increase my return on investment. Okay, but moving forward, this is the property management costs. R and M stands for repair and maintenance. You always need to factor in repair and maintenance for your rental properties, especially a student rental, because there's way more wear and tear on these properties. So what I did was I took 5% of the monthly rental income as a conservative amount, and that 5% just gets added up, accumulates in a bank account. And over time, guys, that money will accumulate, and then when something happens, we have a reserve fund for repair and for maintenance. Okay, so 5% of my rental income there. Property taxes, they already gave this to us in the listing, um, expressed in an annual amount. So I just divided that down by 12 to give us a monthly expense. Insurance, 158. Okay, so utilities. We typically pay for utilities with student rentals. Um, there aren't many students that want to get involved with paying utilities and it limits your renter pool as well. You want to uh, appeal to the masses here. So we're gonna pay for utilities $350 a month. That should be sufficient for that household. A stands for accounting. I personally hold all my properties moving forward um, in an LLC, in, in a corporation. So what we're gonna do is uh, it costs me money, obviously annually for accounting fees. I divide that annual amount down by 12 and here's my accounting fees. Sorry, so here we go. That means that our total monthly expenses if I were to buy this property, would be $1,448, okay? So now the last thing we need to figure out is what, how much money it's gonna cost us to buy this property and what our mortgage payment is gonna be. So over here, guys, if we put down 20% of the full asking price, we're looking at $95,980. That's how much it's gonna cost us just for 20% down for this property, which means we're leveraging 80% uh, loan to value ratio. Now, our closing costs are roughly $7,500. This is gonna be accounting and, uh, sorry, our legal fees and our land transfer tax fees and title insurance, roughly 7,500. It could come in a little bit less um, but this is what I'm seeing right now on our properties around this purchase price. Uh, now, our P stands for payments. With a 30-year amortization, guys, at a 3.19% interest rate, this is what we're getting at the moment. Uh, what we're seeing here, or what this comes out to, is $1,658 per month. Okay? So now that we have our monthly mortgage payment, and we have our monthly expenses, our operating expenses. If we add these two numbers together, guys, what we come up with is our total monthly expenses, our debt service here. This is the debt we need to service basically 
or not, well, this is our debt that we need to service, but this is the amount of money that we need to cover every single month to keep this property running. And how much are we assuming that we're going to get? $3,675 in rental income. If we subtract how much money is going out the door, $3,106, we're left with a total, guys, a grand total of $569 per month in cash flow. So the next thing we wanna do, guys, is figure out what our cash on cash return on investment is because it's great that we're making $569 a month, but how much is that expressed as a return on investment? on our cash. So what we do guys is we take our monthly profit, we multiply that number by 12, and we're gonna divide it into how much money it costs us to secure this property. Now I got 103,480 by adding how much the down payment is plus the closing costs, that's how much money it costs us to get into this property, that equals 103,480. So if you divide that number into how, you divide the profit into how much money it costs you, you get a 6.6% .6 return on investment. This is a cash on cash return on investment, guys. A COC is what it, the acronym is for it. If you ever see that uh, kicking around on the forums or on, an, or on any spreadsheets, can't talk right now. Okay guys, last but not least, we are going to look at the best case scenario for this property. Um, I like to break it down and look at the big picture here, not just at the cash on cash, because what the cash on cash is telling you is how much money you're gonna be generating in cash. What your actual cash on your cash, or sorry, how much cash you're going to be generating on the amount of cash you put into the property. But what that doesn't tell you is it does not factor in the principal pay down on the property. Because guys, you gotta remember that every single month that there's tenants occupying your property, that they're paying you a rent payment, uh, that is paying down your actual mortgage payment. And at the very beginning, in the first year of owning this property and it being fully tenanted, the tenants will actually pay down the property $7,771. Now every year that will increase, okay? And we also did not factor in the appreciation on the property. Depending on where you live, guys, if I factor in a very conservative 3% appreciation, that means that this property will appreciate by $14,400 in the very first year. So that's why I'm thinking, saying that this is a big picture, best case scenario, guys. Well, not even best case because we could appreciate more. But if the property is occupied for all 12 months, full occupancy, getting $3,675 a month, and that means that we will have a principal pay down of $7,971. And if the property appreciates at 3%, very conservative for the first year, we will actually be, get a return of $29,199. Guys, if I express this as a percent based on how much money we put into the property, which was $103,480, this comes out to 28% return on investment guys that's a mic drop right there that is unbelievable you uh, this is why i'm so obsessed with real estate guys this is why i love real estate um i don't think that there's anything that can match real estate like this so that's it guys this wraps up another money mondays i hope you guys like this episode if you did please smash that like button if you didn't hit the dislike button i need to know i want to see feedback from you guys Leave a comment in the comment section below. I would love to hear some feedback from you guys. And please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of these videos. And one more thing, guys. If you guys want me to analyze a deal in your market or in any market, please send it to the email that is linked below. Thank you so much. Till next time, guys.